Hey everybody, I'm so happy you're back here for another week with a powerful message. My mom is about to bring forth an awesome word. Do you know that the word of God is living? It's active, meaning alive and powerful, sharper than a double-edged sword. And so what does that mean? It means God's word, when we hear it, when we listen to it, when we read it, it goes in and it judges the intentions of our heart. It's amazing. It's living and alive. So be encouraged as you listen now to the word for this week. Hi everyone. I think we can all agree that the world is out of control. Fear on every side. The Bible says men's hearts would be failing them because of the things coming upon the earth. The problem started in Genesis in the beginning and the answer is still the same. The Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Jesus came saying, you must be born again. Adam put the lights out in our spirit. He died in his spirit the day he sinned. He didn't die physically. He went on and lived with Eve and had children. But he basically died in his spirit. And since God is a spirit, he was cut off from God, who's a spirit. Satan sinned and was cast out of heaven. Adam and Eve sinned and were cast out of the garden, out of God's presence. Why? Because God cannot be in the presence of sinners or sin. The good news is still the same. God promised a savior, a redeemer, who would redeem mankind, Adam's race, and restore us back into the presence of God. The savior had to be a man, a human like us, to redeem humans back to God. But he could not come out of Adam's fallen sinful race. This human redeemer could not have any sin in order to die for sinners. And God promised he would come from the seed of the woman, the virgin. The scriptures say the virgin would give birth to a son. The Holy Spirit overshadowed her. So the seed or the child in her would be called the son of God. Jesus was coming as a lamb to be slaughtered or sacrificed for the sins of the world. Matter of fact, John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus coming, John was the forerunner, as the scriptures say, he would come to prepare the way. Well, John, when he was baptizing the Jews in the Jordan River, he saw Jesus approaching and he yelled out, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus had to be a human like us, but he could not come out of Adam's sinful fallen race like you and I. That's why the scriptures call Jesus the second Adam. Because Adam in the garden was the first son of God. And Jesus was the second son of God. But there was a difference here. Jesus was not just the son of God. He was God come down humbling himself as one of us, as a human. To be able to be that perfect sacrifice. The wages of sin is death. So Jesus would have to come and take that penalty of death for all of us, for our sins. The good news is he came. He came. I want to go uh, talk for a moment about the great apostle Paul. Jesus chose all his disciples and he chose Paul. His name was Saul. He was a very devout Jew from the Pharisee sect of priests. 
And he was going on a mission to either kill or imprison every Jew that was not following Moses' law and following Jesus' law, Jesus Christ. He already put to death Stephen, a devout Jewish, Jewish uh, follower of Jesus, when a light from heaven came down and struck him blind and he fell off his horse and he heard a voice from heaven speaking and he said, who are you, Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus who you are persecuting. You can't kick against me, Saul. And later Jesus called Paul, Saul and changed his name to Paul. Matter of fact, Paul wrote most of the rest of the uh, scriptures and the letters to the church, to the believers, the Jews and the Gentile believers. And I just love reading his words to us in the book of Romans. Oh my gosh, it's incredible. You have to read the book of Romans. He starts out saying there's no excuse for anyone to not believe in God when God's creation is all over the place. And then he goes into later what can separate us from the love of God in those same chapters in Romans. But I want to first talk about in the letter to the Ephesian church, which Paul personally is speaking a lot to us non-Jews who became believers in his Jewish Messiah. And he starts in chapter two by saying, I want you to remember that you Gentiles, which means the non-Jews, okay? You guys were outsiders. You were dead in your sins. Now, remember we said Adam died in his spirit and Jesus comes along saying, you must be born again in your spirit. And so here the apostle is trying to remind us Gentiles about the humility that the Jewish nation was the only ones that knew God, knew his laws, obeyed his laws, uh, had the law, and all other nations of Gentiles were excluded. No one else knew the one true God. No one else had his laws. And God chose the nation of Israel to reveal himself to and also that they would bring the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, into the world through their lineage. And then Jesus would send them to all nations, promised to Abraham, to have faith in Abraham's seed, who would be the seed of the virgin or the seed of the woman, Jesus Christ. So Paul is saying to us, you guys, you Gentiles, I want you to remember, you were called the uncircumcised dogs. Remember David called Goliath uh, from another nation? You were uncircumcised dog. And there was a woman that was coming to Jesus uh, for healing for her daughter that had demons. And uh, Jesus' apostles were saying, Lord, send her away. She's unclean. She didn't have the blood atonement of the animals for her sins. So she was not clean. They didn't want to even get near her. And they're saying, send her away, Lord. And Jesus himself, in an indirect way, said, I understand that you want what belongs to the children of Israel, the children's bread, which is healing. But this is only for the children of Israel right now. It's, it, it's not for the dogs. And so in an indirect way, Jesus was calling her an uncircumcised person or a dog. That's what all nations were considered who were not having their sins cleansed by those sacrificial animals that represented Jesus. And so Paul here is trying to remind us you once were called the uncircumcised dogs, heathen, so on and so forth, before you came to our Jewish Christ, our Redeemer, 
and got saved, got your sins washed by his blood. He said, you were not a citizen of Israel. You, you guys were not included in all of the promises that God gave Israel. You were in this world without God and without no hope of heaven. Wow. Do you realize how fortunate we are for God's people, Israel, the Jewish people who brought the Messiah, the Redeemer that was promised in Genesis to come redeem us back to God? This is just magnificent to think about it. And so Paul went on to say, but Jesus, the Redeemer, changed all of this. And now you who were once far away from God have been brought near to God by the atoning blood of our Redeemer, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? No sin could be in the presence of God. And so a Messiah came to take away our sins. Jesus took all the sins of the world upon himself. Like he was the, the one that sinned. And God took out his wrath on his son Jesus on the cross to punish him and give him the penalty of death, which the law commanded when we break God's law. And he did that for us because he loved us. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus puts the light back on in our spirit. He said, you must be born again in your spirit. And when we receive his blood atonement and believe that he took away, carried away our sins, the spirit of God who was there with Adam and Eve, comes to live inside of us. Isn't that awesome? We are the light of the world because Jesus is the light of the world and he's in us. I want to end with this. I know everyone struggles with sin and Paul got into all of that in the book of Romans mainly, talking about the struggle he had where he wanted to do right but he found he couldn't because his flesh just fought against everything good. And that's why when we die, our flesh can't go to heaven. It goes back to the dust. Although Jesus does promise to raise it back to life one day. But our spirit goes right to be with God. The Bible says in Proverbs 24, 16, although a righteous man may fall seven times, they will rise again. So when you have a struggle with sin, I don't care what it is, but if you're a Christian and you find yourself struggling and you sit, slip into sin, now I'm not saying you daily live in sin like we used to before Christ, but you slip into a sin. Because sin is pleasurable, but the wages of sin is death. But if you keep slipping, remember this. A righteous man, and what makes us righteous? None of our goodness. The blood of Jesus makes us righteous. So if you're a righteous person, cleansed by Jesus' blood, and you keep falling into a certain sin, never give up. Because Jesus already paid for every sin you're ever going to commit. And he just wants you to know he loves you. And he says, come on, get back up. Try again. As long as you're trying, that's the important thing. And you will overcome. I'm going to end with, I know I said that a scripture ago, but I really am going to end with Paul's words in Romans chapter 8. He went on to say, after all Jesus did for us, because he loved us and gave up his life for us, can anything separate us from the love of Christ? No, 
exclamation point, he says. No matter what we're going through on earth, if it's the virus, if it's the worst scenario, death. He said, no matter what we go through, Jesus gives us overwhelming victory because he loves us. I am convinced nothing can separate us from God's love, not death, not life, no angels, no demons, no fears of today, no worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from the love of God. No power in the sky above or in this earth below. Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that has been revealed to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, guys, well, as mom said, Jesus Christ is still the answer for every problem that we face today. And you know what? He is the cornerstone that holds us Gentiles and Jews together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. something out of today. I hope it really spoke to you. And you know, like I said in the beginning, God's word is alive. So when you hear his word, it goes in you and it's going to do something powerful. So please remember this week to go online and give 
um, at laborlovusa.org. Remember us in your giving. And every time, remember, when you sow, the scripture says, whatsoever a man sows, he shall reap. And this week, you know, I've really been thinking a lot on sowing, being generous in our giving. And whether it's encouraging a friend or just doing something nice for somebody, if it is in your tithes and offerings, you know, be generous in your giving. You know, my dad would always tell us, if you're going to leave, you know, the waitress $3, just leave 5 You know, if you're able to do that, go a little bit above and beyond because that little bit makes a big difference. So we love you guys. Have a victorious week and we will see you next week.